Hello, and welcome to Field of Bronze Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Exchange Edge Transport. In order for the Exchange 2013 Edge Transport server to work correctly, certain ports must be open on the firewall. On the firewall going to the external WAN internet, port 25 must be open to allow email servers to transmit data packets between each other. On the firewall going to the external LAN, not only must port 25 be open, but also port 50389, which allows the LDAP or lightweight directory access protocol. Packets must be used for the ATOM to work correctly. And also port 50686 needs to be open in order to allow the secure LDAP protocol to run the edge sync process. This is the setup that we will be using in this lab. We'll have an ISA firewall server which connects our LAN, DMV, and the internet. In our LAN network, we'll have an Active Directory server and an Exchange server which has the role of both mailbox and client. On our DMV, we'll have an Exchange Server 2013 Edge Transport server. What we're going to attempt to do in this lab is to send an email message from our email servers out to the internet. Since we went over how to install an Exchange Server, in the previous videos, I will not bother to install the Exchange Server in this video since the process is very much the same. Instead, what we will do to save time is simply to connect the Edge Server to the Mailbox Server and then send out a test email message from there. Here we are on a server called Edge. I decided not to set up the DNS on this computer, but the Edge server needs to know how to contact the Exchange server in the local LAN. So I'll put the information inside of a host file, which is where I'm going right now. Notice I put the information both of where the Exchange server is and where the domain controller is. Now I'm going to create an Edge subscription file which will give the mailbox server the information that it needs to contact the Edge server. I'll open up the Edge management shell. I'm typing in the commands for the new Edge subscription so it will create the subscription file. This is just basically telling me that I have a limited amount of time for security reasons in order to use the subscription. I'll choose yes. We've created a subscription file in the root C directory. Let's take a look at it. Now we're on the server exchange one which is in our local LAN. I copied the Edge subscription file to the local C drive of this computer using a flash drive. I've also included a text file with the commands for connecting a Exchange mailbox to an Edge transport server. You would use a similar command except for you would change the site to your site instead of for Dallas and you would name the subscription file to whatever you called it. Otherwise, this should be exactly the same. Let me copy and paste it into the Exchange Management shell.
There I executed the command. Notice it recognized the name of the Edge server. Now let me start the Edge synchronization process. Notice it says that the results were successful. Now I'll log into the Exchange Admin Center so we can see if the mailbox server recognizes the subscription. Here we can see that two new SYN connectors were created, both of them called Edge Sync. It looked like the mailbox server has successfully accepted the connection with the Edge server. Now we're back on the Edge server. Let's go ahead and verify that the Edge server recognized the connection with the mailbox server. I'll open up the Exchange Management shell. I'm going to run the command get accepted domains to see if it recognized what domain the mailbox server has accepted. Here we can see that it recognizes philabrown.local. Of course, this is not routable on the internet, so we have to go back to the mailbox server and add philabrown.com as being the accepted domain. Now we're back on the Exchange server. In order to save time, I already have the Exchange Admin Center in the taskbar below. I'll click on the Accepted Domain. And also I'll make it the default domain. We can see now there is fiddlebrown.com at the top and fiddlebrown.local at the bottom. And they are both authoritative. Now let me click on the tab to go to the Outlook web app. I'm going to send an email out to one of my external email accounts. This is just a test email just to verify that the Edge server will correctly send email on my behalf. Okay, I sent the email, but I know because I have a dynamic IP address, this email will not be accepted at philabrown.letu.edu. What I'm going to do is wait a few hours, and I should get a reply about this. Okay, we're back on Exchange 1. And it's a few hours later. Let's take a look at the Outlook web app and see if we got any messages back. Here is the message. It says that the message was delayed for the recipients or groups. Let's take a look at the message itself. Here we can see that the Edge server was trying to connect with a server and it's going to continue to try for a certain period of time. We can see that the generating server was our Edge server at edge.philabrown.local and the receiving server was letu.edu and they give the specific IP number that it tried. This message is telling us that the remote server actually gave us an error message. 
This is important. It means that the remote server from LETU recognized that we were trying to contact it, but for some reason, it would not accept our message. That's because my external IP address is a dynamic IP address, and the LETU server assumed that I was sending spam email messages and shut it down. But still, we know we contacted the LETU server, which was what I was attempting to do. In this video, we were able to connect our Exchange email server to an external email server and get a reply back. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.